What's up, guys? It's S Fan here, and I just got back from BlizzCon. At BlizzCon, those of you who who may not be aware, weren't following the news before, uh, myself and the rest of the Classic Cast crew, we got access. We, we got media passes, so we got some exclusive access to certain things. Uh, so myself, Stay Safe, and Tips uh, got to join in on a kind of group press conference style interview uh, with two developers, and that was Brian Birmingham and John Height. John Heights, the executive producer of WoW, and Brian Birmingham's the lead on Classic. Uh, he was the guy wearing the green shirt at the Classic panel. And uh, this happened, this interview actually happened right before the Classic panel. So, you know, we got a chance to kind of ask them some questions, bring up some concerns. One of the things that we didn't bring up was loot trading, uh, because obviously, like, we, we didn't even know about it at the time. But, you know, we talk about shorting, we talk about some things in the demo, and we get an, a little bit of interesting insight with the developers, and uh, I'm pretty sure this video hasn't been posted anywhere else on the internet. Uh, I don't think I saw anybody else in there recording, actually. I saw some people maybe doing voice, I know Wowhead was there, but as far as just recording the thing, uh, I don't think I saw anybody else in there doing that. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoy. If you guys like this content, if you guys like classic content, if you guys are excited for classic WoW, uh, I would recommend you checking out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash SFANTV, and... Uh, if you would, maybe hit the video with a like, maybe sub if you really like it, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Uh, so let's uh, start off by letting them introduce themselves, and then we'll jump into the Q&A. Hi. Hi, John Knight. <laughs> Hi. The executive producer of WOW. I still can't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my name is Brian Birmingham, and I'm the lead software engineer on the World of Warcraft Classic. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> We're as excited as you are, honestly. Thank you for having, like, providing your passion and uh, and making it so that it, we could really see how passionate our fans were about this because it kind of gave us the motivation to go look and see if this was possible. Like, I know in the past we had often thought this would be too difficult to do. It would take too much time. It would be too much of an effort. But because of the the extreme outpouring of support and passion from all of our fans. It gave us the motivation to, to look back and see what it would take to do this. And it really takes some time, do some research, and, uh, and we came up with a path that we really think could work. So, thank you. Oh, like comments in the source code? <laughs> oh, God. Um, I think uh, they're, they're usually, uh, I, I don't know, any, I, I'm not, I, don't, I can't think of any specific one. But uh, there certainly are some uh, some funny ones about you know people usually using some language that maybe they shouldn't and things like that. And uh, so that's why we need to take that out. <laughs> yeah. it doesn't have to be that accurate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, usually there uh, there there are those kinds of funny things. You know, like oh, this you know take this out before this happens, then you can see it's still in there. Those kinds of things. Yeah, <laughs> actually. Future raids and expansions. I'm sorry, future raids and expansions. Yes. What do you mean by future? Uh, like. When the Final Classic launches, there's a certain point you're going to do the burning crusade. Oh, I see. We're, right now, we're focused on World of Warcraft Classic. Uh, we're really excited to hear what the community thinks about it. We want to see what the passion is, and we're certainly open to other ideas. We want to hear what the community thinks about that. Um, but right now, we're, we're staying focused on making sure we recreate the authentic classic experience. So, that being said, what is your plan for progressive content release within Classic WoW? I want to direct you to the panel that's coming up in just about a oh. half an hour or an hour. Great. Okay. And yeah, uh, cool. Ian will address that there. I've got a very specific question about sharding in particular. Um, I guess uh, there was a post that was, that was released yesterday by one of the CMs online um, talking about the possibility of sharding in Classic. Um, sharding has always been a very contentious topic within the community. Um, have you guys sought out any alternatives to accommodate server load, like lowering the population caps? Um, or possibly dynamic respawns or anything like that in lieu of sharding? Is there anything we can do to avoid sharding? Basically? I, I'm really glad you asked that question. And yeah. I, it's a really complicated topic, and you're right. It's something that is contentious, and I understand why people are passionate about this. One of the things that we're really committed to and really focused on is trying to create that authentic social infrastructure, that authentic sense of community, those like knowing who you are on the server, knowing who everybody else is on the server. Yes. And so when we say sharding, I want to be clear that that's a term that is often overused and misunderstood. And we're going to have some more communication in the months to come about what the differences are between that and other systems that are very similar to it or might have those effects. Um, and we are we are looking at what the what the options are available to us. There's a lot of technologies that go into the, the into battle for Azeroth that have similar kinds of effects. And one of the ones I want to call out that a lot of people confuse with sharding is phasing. And there is no phasing. 
There's not. Uh, another one is cross-realm zones, and there's no cross-realm zones. And so when we talk about like the possibility of sharding, it really is a possibility of something we want to investigate and look at and see what we can do to mitigate. Um, and we'll have more information for you in the months to come. Does that help? Thank you, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. A while back, Mike Morhan famously told people who said they wanted the, you know, the classic World of Warcraft, you think you do, but you don't. Because they can actually think that's yeah, yeah, right. yeah. 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 basically, you know, because of reasons like, you know, all the changes that people haven't noticed over the years being implemented into the game. So, what's changed to make you guys say, okay, let's go back and give people that World Class if they want? And are you addressing the issues like you know, incremental changes for, for gameplay reasons? Well, I think, you know, there's, there's always the danger when you, you have this nostalgic view of something that. <laughs> when you bring it back into a more modern era, you know, where we have, you know, higher resolution graphics and we have a lot of conveniences that we've added, you know, throughout modern WoW uh, in some ways to make it easier to play or to take some of the work out of playing that people that are playing today, experiencing what people experienced 14 years ago will find uh, it not as attractive. Mm. And I think that that's sort of where that statement came from is a, is a sense that you have this nostalgia, we don't want to ruin that nostalgia for you. Uh, but the really cool thing about it is that we can we can support both of these worlds. You know, we're in this very unique situation where there is a game that has been evolving for 14 years that will continue to evolve, hopefully for another 14 or 15 more and beyond. And 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 we, we're actually before that game even ends, we're being asked to bring forward what was the original experience, and we can do it. Um, and probably only we can do it in, in such an authentic manner. So what led to us doing it? Honestly, it was mostly the fans. You know, it was continuous feedback, continuous requests, attempts on the part of fans to resurrect on their own way uh, some portion or some you know uh, experience that was like that. Uh, so that's what prompted us. Speaking of that, do you have any of the Nostalgia team members working on Classic WoW right now? We do not. We do not. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I was going to uh, kind of kind of back on the topic of like phasing and sharding, and uh, I think that you know you talk about how there's different terminology and things may seem similar, but they're not really. You know, you might see sharding, but you think it's phasing or this and that. And I, I think one thing, you know, we talked about this last night. We did, we did a podcast. We talked about it last night, but I, I think it doesn't really matter what people call it. What matters is what they see, and I, I think that's you know whether they're calling it phasing or sharding. You know, it, it's sharding, but what they see is that they're seeing people taken out of the world, right? And the game's World of Warcraft. And it ends up not feeling like World of Warcraft whenever there's not people in the world. And uh, I think that's just one of the big things. And I know you say it might be something where, uh, it might be something you have to look at for the future or whatever, but uh, you know, we're pretty involved in the community. We get a lot of feedback from people. And uh, one of like my personal main goals is to, to be able to kind of kind of translate and, and be able to take what people are saying however way they say it and kind of make it more um, kind of kind of easier to understand right and, and I think at the end of the day a lot of people think that sharding is not vanilla and it's something that feels that like people feel like it takes away from the game a lot to the point where people are actually fairly upset about seeing it in the demo and I, I understand to some extent at least I'm not a developer I'm not a programmer but I understand to some extent that you guys, whenever you're putting out a demo, you're putting it out so it, it, it looks appealing to the eyes whenever you first see it. Like you might hide certain like UI elements and stuff, but on the back end, it's not actually removed from the game. Uh, one thing that came up is you can LFR, slash LFR, and the LFR window comes up. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. You can't see it. You can't click on it. Right. But that's an example of something that, like, okay, let's just like hide this for now, and we'll, we'll go back and clean it up later after the demo whenever we want to get a, a, real, a real release out. Um, I don't know, that's just kind of more of like a message that I wanted to convey, I guess, that like that's something that people are worried about whenever they see some stuff like that. Uh, not necessarily bugs, but design design decisions. That's that's what they're worried about, is whenever they see a design decision that's not necessarily vanilla. That's, that's one of the things we wanted to make sure that we addressed. That's one of the reasons we put out that post on the community, was we wanted people to know that just because you see it in the demo today doesn't mean that that's exactly the way it's going to work. This, this is a demo. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that for the demo, people could focus on that we restored the original abilities, that we restored the original quest content, that we restored the original terrain and the areas. We wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to see that that was in. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, the, the feeling of like community and like large player populations coming together is something that we want to try to recreate as well. Um, okay. That's not something that would have been conducive to being able to see everything else in the demo. We want to make sure everybody had that chance to see those things. So as you said, this is a demo. It's a very different situation than live. 
Um, and so we made different decisions for demo than we would make for live. Right. In fairness to Brandon and his team too, we when we we really wanted this to come out next summer, and uh, we realized that, that we needed to tell our fans what our progress was, and what better way to show to tell you the progress than to show you the progress. Yeah. Um, and so we erred on the side of we'll leave we'll leave some of these hooks in the demo so that we can get this on the show floors, so that we can get it out in people's homes. Uh, and without, we didn't want to cause any alarm that people would think that, oh, wait a minute, this is just, you know, a, a, a refacing of the a modern wow. Awesome. But believe me, they are going through every little detail to make sure they have an ex authentic experience uh, down to make, making the X12 uh, level engine match the lighting of, of uh, the lighting as it was 14 years ago. Awesome. awesome. So you guys, are, you guys are adjusting the lighting. The lighting in the demo right now is not what we're going to see? Uh, we have been working on it, and it is a lot closer than it was. So actually, if you come to the panel today, you'll see where it started awesome. and what we've done so far to get it to where it is today. Awesome. And we are going to keep looking at it. Awesome. If, there's, if there's specific things that you guys see are different, that's one of the reasons that we're so excited about the passion the community brings us, mm -hmm. is that now that we can show you this demo, you can see the direction that we're going, where we're bringing it from the modern world of Warcraft back in time. And where every, every change we make brings us closer to how it was authentically back in 2006 that we hope that you guys will help us find the things that are slightly off and point them out to us and let us know which ones are the most important. Absolutely. Speaking awesome. of that though a little bit, were you, what was the most like frustrating part? Is, did, was there one part of the development process that you're like, man, we don't want to have to do this part again, from taking it back to where World of Warcraft is now to where it was when people first started getting into the game? I can't think of anything that was particularly frustrating. Um, there have been some, some certainly challenges along the way, and we'll go into some examples of that uh, in the panel later. But uh, just to give you some examples uh, here for this interview, the, uh, the, uh, the terrain, like there, there's, a, there's a, some format differences in the terrain that, um, that don't look right as we started to restore them, and we had to go make changes in the code so that they would read the new terrain. Actually, and I'm sorry, in that case, we actually changed the terrain so that it would match the new engine, but then it looks correct in game. And so that's a perfect example of where like, even though we have the original, the, the original data, if we wrote, load it into the modern engine, it doesn't work right, and you'll see examples of that. Uh, and then we make changes to it to make it look correct, even though, of course, the actual data on disk is different. Does that make sense? Yeah. We've got a question in the back row, and then I think <coughs> in front of you. Uh, yeah, can you talk about some of the challenges in bringing the copyrights and magic and stack over and the course of back to the 2006 stack? Well, you said the network stack, and actually, we aren't, we aren't needing to make any changes to the network stack. Like, that's, that's something that is that we are going to use from the mainline code, to, from the modern code today, and we're able to keep that as it is. That's one of the things that we're excited that we can start with that code for, is so that we can keep all those improvements. So you know, one, one thing where we're maybe deviating from the original experience is that we want a lot more stability on the network side. Uh, hopefully we'll reduce the queue times that you might have experienced back in the day. Uh, no guarantees on day one though, because we anticipate there'll be a lot of people coming in. But that point on, that's one of the reasons why we want to go with our modern network code and hardware as well. So that the functionality that's being added over the years that you guys have any challenges? Um, I would say the, 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 yeah, that was pretty straightforward. Um, there have been like uh, little changes like uh, making sure that the, the actual Battle.net client could uh, distribute both versions of the game simultaneously. Uh, and we have great partners uh, throughout the company that, that maintain that application and we're able to help us out with that. Um, a question on server population caps. Have you determined what the server population caps will be? I think back in vanilla, they're between 2,500 to 3,000. Have you considered raising them or keeping them as they were back in the day? Um, that, that's not actually how it works. It's not like a population cap exactly. It's like number of players online, but we are looking at those. Those are the kinds of things that we're talking about. We're trying to find other solutions to make sure that we can provide a level of stability and also sense of the realm community. So we, so we certainly have the ability to have a higher realm population mm -hmm. simultaneous than we, we had back in the day. Yeah. So the good thing news is we can dial it. You know, hmm. back then it was we put everyone in, everyone in that we possibly could yeah. before the, the CPUs melted. So yeah. So kind of on the topic of uh, progressive content release, uh, itemization is something else that you know comes up a lot. It's we talk about it a lot. I don't know if are you gonna talk about this in the panel? Uh, they they should talk about that in the panel. I okay. All right. I don't want to waste time. I was going to ask, would you say that the demo is a pretty accurate representation of how far along you guys are, or internally are you guys much further along? It's pretty accurate. Is it? Okay. Cool. Uh, EverQuest also they took their classic experience and created legacy servers. One of the things they found was they didn't know what all the NPCs did because they didn't quite properly categorize and list down all the 
functions back in the day when they first launched the game. Do you guys have any problems where you came across objects or character requests that weren't quite, we didn't know what they did? Um, it's not. It's not exactly a matter of not knowing what they did. We actually have a, a very. We're very fortunate that we were able to recover so much of our original uh, data and original art and original source code that we were able to put together internally a, a authentic recreation of one twelve that we can compare things against. So we can actually do those side by side comparisons and say this is what it actually looked like. And of course, it has all these problems like exploited behaviors that are allowed or crash bugs and things like that. And so of course, we don't want to ship that version. And that's why we're taking the approach we are. But because we have it, and we can look at them internally, we can look at them side by side and say, we know what this what this looks like, and we know what it looks like now, and we can look at those differences and then make things make the changes to make our our builds excuse me of WoW Classic <coughs> more and more like the authentic reference client that we have. Sorry, I think we had a question. You've been very patient. Oh, just I just wanted to kind of tack on to the whole itemization thing. Uh, class balance was obviously kind of all over the place back in back in the day, and I was just kind of wondering what your approach was going to be to um, maybe make things that were terrible not so terrible, or make things that were really, really good if you're going to plan to bring them down or anything. Um, Are you advocating that we go in and rebalance the classes back in, in that Not era? necessarily, <laughs> just wondering if the approach was maybe going to be something like, leave it as is, and then maybe ask the community, like, hey, remember that this spec on this class was absolutely garbage and terrible and nobody used it. What if we made it not so terrible after, like, however many months or years if there was enough of the community outreach to say, like, hey, can you tweak this? We don't have any plans to make any changes to any of the balance in, in 112. We're, we're starting with 112 because we feel like it's the most complete and most balanced version of the game that was out in, cl in that classic period. That's why we're starting there is because we feel like it was pretty complete. Uh, I, I, I don't want to say that we wouldn't listen to the community. Obviously, we think the community's passion is important and your feedback is really important. And we really believe that every voice matters. So we're always listening. But we do want to make sure that we get this authentic recreation because uh, if you want uh, like the modern balance changes, we have those. Those are in Battle for Azeroth. If we, if we wanted to, to, to get what we would do today, we have what we would do today. That's available. But we don't have what we did back then, and we want to be able to give people back what we did back then, especially on things like class balance and that authentic gameplay experience and those authentic gameplay systems in the way that they worked. Okay, Perfect. no, that's, I'm very glad to hear that. You know. Yeah, those those of you that have managed to hang on to your tips and tricks from you know the era are going to you're going to see a, a flood on the internet for the old <coughs> pages and hits. So. Uh, I would I would advocate you should probably be checking them to make sure that data is still good because people are going to be diving for it. Wait a minute, what did I need to do for this? <laughs> also, I mean, it's, it's worth pointing out on that same subject that like some of the problems that we have had, problems, challenges that we've had as we go through restoring this is places where the data and the code don't fit right and what we're trying to do is make them fit better. And so sometimes we will find things where uh, it doesn't work the way that it was supposed to and we want it to. And so that's one of the other things that we want to reach out to the community to help you guys, or to have you guys help us find all those things. It's a very large, expansive game. There's a lot of ground to cover. And so if we missed something, let us know. Don't, like, please help us. Assume that we want to do it authentically. That's what we want, and help us find it. Good to hear. So, so would you say, uh, you know, in, in terms of the demo, would you say that it's not, uh, the demo isn't particularly an, act, an accurate um, representation of what, what the game could actually be? Because I know there's a lot of stuff like, for example, shamans can use two-handed weapons right now. From what I heard, I didn't I didn't play one, but somebody was telling me there's a bug where they can get their shaman to use a two-handed weapon, and there's stuff with debuff slots, like personal debuff slots showing up. There's a lot of little like under the table things. Okay, yeah, there, there are, those a, are, those are there a lot of work to do. So uh, I would I would say that if you're seeing little differences, it is probable that those are things that we haven't finished yet. Okay. because that, that's after all we're we're planning to release in summer 2019, but it's not that we're releasing today. And so we have a lot of work to do to make that date. And mm -hmm. so those are some of the things you're seeing there. Like shamans using a two-handed weapon, I believe that's a talent you have to get in there. Right. And so yeah, if, if you're able to equip one without the talent, then that's a mistake. Right. Question in the back, and then I think you hit one. How long did it actually take each and to get that build with one twelve um, The build of 112. Uh, you know, I'm not, I don't know if I have an exact date there. I'm not sure we have that on hand. I'm sorry. Uh, well, again, no sort of rock the icon. I mean, it was a lot of different little pieces coming together over a long period of time. Like, it wasn't like a single person working on a continuous thing where I have like a start date and an end date and a number of engineers that were assigned to it. It was like a, it was a research and development project that was happening kind of on the side from a variety of engineers working together. Do you know so, that started? Say again? Do you know when that project started? Okay. Roughly two years ago. Yeah, roughly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any plans for service? I'm, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. 
Uh, we're speaking about tips and tricks on classic uh, two questions ago. Things like wall jumping, exploring, and the terrain. Are we still going to have those in classic? Uh, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure we are not going to have wall jumping, and the reason for that is because we have some of our modern movement enforcement and exploit detection code prevents things like wall jumping, and so we won't have that. Um, are there any plans for services like character transfers, name changes, or any kind of cash shop for classic? But we want to ex like examine those uh, in a case-by-case -case basis. Right now, we don't have any plans to announce any of those, and uh, some of those were available in the classic era. So we're going to go look through those in the future and try to figure out which ones make sense for classic. We do want to like create that authentic experience, and like there were authentic needs for people to do things like character transfers. That's an example we, of one we we might include, but we don't have any plans to do that right now. One. You didn't ask, but one caveat to be clear, there won't be character transfers to and from modern WoW and classical. Oh, that's a good point. Too. Those ecosystems good. we're going to preserve and, and keep that sacrosanct. So, so like transmog 2 won't work both ways. Like if you get an item in classic WoW, like a transmog they're, item. You, they're two different characters. Okay. Yeah, you're build a character in classic, right. you'll play that character in classic. That's great. We'll be able, we will have Battle.net friends, you know, real ID friends. You'll be able to communicate with your friends that are playing <laughs> in modern WoW as you would, you know, people that are playing Overwatch, uh, but you won't be able to take your character and move it over to Modern WoW. And yeah, certainly any like items that you get playing WoW Classic will not transfer over to your mainline, or for, to your modern characters. Awesome. We've so got time for about two more, roughly, so you, then you, and then we have time here. Okay. So on the topic of Battle.net, uh, one of the concerns for a lot of people is like cross-faction collusion, and I, I understand how... Okay, if you're already friends with somebody who happens to be playing on the opposite faction on the same server, you already have a line of communication established with that person. You can talk to them on Discord or whatever, right? But a, a big concern for a lot of people is the fact that in Retail WoW, I can go right-click on a guy's portrait and then send friend requests for Battle.net, and I can open a line of communication with somebody on the opposing faction. Is this something that you guys would be looking at, at possibly removing? Because I, I remember back in the day, cross-faction inclusion was something that was against TOS, and yeah. now it's getting enabled if it's if it's not that way. We have actually had internal discussions about that already. Awesome. We are thinking about that. Yeah. Awesome. Great. I was wondering if you guys are making any changes to the rate system, like as far as like 40-man rates, is that still going to be a thing? Yes, 40-man rates will still be a thing. We're going to bring them back exactly as they were. We think that that, that is... It, a very important part to uh, restoring World of Warcraft Classic and that authentic, that authentic experience. When you were looking at this project, you decided to work from current WoW back, mm -hmm. all the way backwards, as opposed to working from backwards forwards. Why, yeah. why the decision to work from current backwards as opposed to from previous forwards? As far as when you're doing networking, everything like that, you're incorporating current systems. Sure. I was curious as to why you didn't start at square one and then pull you start to start at square eight and work backwards and work. It has to do with how we identify what the differences are. That's actually very much the point of the panel that we're going to have is to talk about exactly that question. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the crux of it is that when we're going from where we are backwards, it's very clear what the path is. We can see it. Everybody can see it. You guys can help us see it. If we were going from where we were back then to forwards, a lot of those issues are invisible to us. We can't see them until there's like a million players online simultaneously and then the server crashes. Or uh, there's a malicious exploit and we don't know about it until somebody reminds us that we've forgotten to fix it again. Um, and like trying to like replay those four from the history that we've recorded, that just lands us to where we are today. That doesn't help. Right. One big discussion I hear a lot of the time is what happens after next Ramus is done. Like Old School RuneScape is added uh, with player polls, custom content, or bonus content. Have you guys thought about new content um, that you'll make for Classic WoW? Uh, we don't have any plans to announce it. Okay, great, great. Yeah. All right, I think we're about out of time. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you guys. We could talk for hours, man. Yeah. I know, yeah. I really appreciate your guys' passion. No, no, honestly, you guys do a great thing.